Welcome to this sample audio clip, which comes from the series entitled multi hall Conversations with Jim Brown. In this recording, Jim speaks to outdoorsman, water sports entrepreneur, and small trimaran developer Andy Zimmerman. Andy is the owner of the Get Outdoors store in Greensboro, North Carolina, found on the web at www.getoutdoors.us. You can find out more about this historic audio conversation series with Jim Brown at www.outrigmedia.com. talk about you know other adventures and uh um you know i i uh found a lot of adventure after i'd met you and uh got into sailing and uh just a new experience on the water and you know we uh we started out with the wind rider 16 and you know uh, some similarities to the squirting with that wave piercing hull that you designed Oh, yeah, that's right. I suppose a squirt boat has a wave-piercing bow. That's true. It does. It does. It's <laughs> yeah. just turned the other way, Jim. Uh-huh. And, you know, uh, I mean, it was uh, – I remember going out in the Wind Rider in rougher coastal waters and thinking the same thing. Because, it, it, you know, in a way, it was a wet ride. Um, yeah. And, of course, squirting was a wet ride. Yeah. Um, but, you know, piercing through the waves, you know, in the ocean, I had a similar feeling, you know, instead of going up and over them like people were used to, um, you know, I had never been introduced to a wave-piercing hull. I'd been yeah. introduced to a uh, a river-piercing, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, hull, yeah. but, but never out on a large body of water in a sailboat so uh yeah it was interesting and brought some new adventure uh into my life and uh you know we started camping out of the wind riders and uh and even more so when the wind rider 17 came along uh but then uh uh you know the project that we did with the rave where the foils were piercing through the waters and uh you know the boat was totally out of the water um, you know, and again, another level of adventure and innovation, you know, that, uh, which is adventure to me, you know, building something that's totally different as long as it makes sense than anybody else ever made. And, uh, well, that, we that's great, that with Andy, the wind uh, rider. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the hydrofoil thing is, uh, uh, close to my heart at the moment because uh, it was just last weekend that, that I was able to finally really go for a ride in a, in a hydrofoil sailboat um, down there at uh, uh, Melbourne, Florida, right. with uh, Mike McGarry and uh, Sam Bradfield and uh, Tom Heyman. We uh, we sailed their new uh, 17-foot trimaran that's equipped with three T-foils. That is, a, it, it looks like an inverted T. There's a vertical dagger going down into the water with a horizontal wing attached to the bottom of the dagger, and the wings actually lift the boat up out of the water. I'm describing that for our, our listeners. And so that once you can get the hulls out of the water, you don't have to push tons of it out of the way to get through, and all of a sudden the boat takes off. So you've experienced this, but let me let me describe what it was like for me. Um, you know, I've I, I've done a, a a fair bit of sailing. I started out as a as a schooner bum, and then uh, subsequently have been through like 50 years of multi hulling. But I've never experienced anything like this this hydrofoiling thing. Uh, we were out there getting the boat set up, and uh, and then uh, Mike McGarry said, "Okay, she's going to want to fly. Here we go." And he <clears throat> he put the boat off of the wind, and the thing began to charge ahead. And uh, the lee float kicked up a huge uh, uh, spray. It seemed like the 
the spray was getting hit harder than the water was getting pushed out of the way faster than anything I'd ever seen. And then all of a sudden it quit. Uh, the, the spray completely stopped because the boat was like levitating and the sensation of levitating was almost imperceptible, but the acceleration was definite, you know, <laughs> it, it was profound uh quite something for me i mean i uh, i had never seen a boat take off like that and i was kneeling on the trampolines uh, they have uh, net trampolines in that boat andy and get your fingers through you know mm-hmm. and i was really hanging on to that thing as the boat <laughs> took off and uh uh the, the next thing I, I i noticed was the quiet uh, you know, yeah. all the water noise was gone. You could hear yep. the wind okay. And so then Mike sheeted in and started heading up. And holy mackerel, there was all of a sudden just a, you know, a quantum increase in the apparent wind. It was like hanging your head out the car window. And, yeah, uh, I, I liken the sound to uh, ice skating. You know, you're just kind of skimming on top of frozen yeah. water and, you know, um, and here you're skimming just below the surface with some airplane wings, you know, foil shapes that are lifting the whole boat up in the air. It's, well, I hadn't I hadn't thought of that. Uh, those vertical daggers uh, do slice the surface, and there is a, a faint white noise that right. results. Uh, but uh, I hadn't thought of it as being skating. That's right. I thought of it as soaring. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Sam's new boat is... Uh, is, is named osprey, but the thing doesn't fly like an osprey. It flies like a pelican. It's it's skimming yeah, the right. waves, just right. touching them with its wingtips. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, just always in the air, but just right off of the water, and uh, and go. My gosh, I mean, the thing would just rip. It was like looking back. Like opening the door of a seaplane when you're taxiing for takeoff and looking back. <laughs> That's a good description. <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't get over it. And uh, and and comfort? Oh, man, it was yeah. so much more comfortable than jumping over the chop, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the wake, I couldn't get over the wake. There was... Three thin lines of like salt steam just converging away rapidly, going away. And uh, because of my limited vision, I couldn't see down into the water to see the the hydrofoils themselves. And uh, and so uh, all of a sudden, I, I wanted more, man. I wanted more wind, more speed, and I wanted to be. Sailing at night in phosphorescent sea. Oh, that'd be cool. You know, so you could see the outline of the foils down there doing their job. Well, something to look forward to. Yeah. 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 And uh, so the listeners should know that uh, Andy, uh, this this guy we're talking with, my God, he he produced the full, the first consumer level hydrofoil born sailboat, the Rave. What, about uh, 2001 or so? Or 2000? Uh, it was a little bit before that, Jim. It's probably uh, mm-hmm. 2000 when we first came out with that boat. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I called it the manufacturing accomplishment of a lifetime that we never made any money on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We probably, you know, we learned a lot, and uh, obviously it uh, it got us a tremendous amount of attention. I think for the wind rider, you know, yeah, I think I think a lot of people looked at the rave and then bought wind riders from us. Yeah, um, you know, yeah. Uh, well, that was sure called the wind rider rave. Cutting, huh? Sure Go gave ahead, your Jim. company a cutting edge image. Oh, you know, it was written up in every single magazine, plastics industry news, and, you know, front cover picture, and the plastic manufacturer, you know, multi-billion dollar company who sold us the plastic, put it in there on the front cover of their annual report. Yeah. Um, You know, so it got us a tremendous amount of attention. We learned a tremendous amount from a manufacturing standpoint. Again, you know, the the molded through 
uh, uh, ports for the for the uh, foils. Um, you know, we did some first time stuff with that boat um, that had some applications to other manufacturing efforts. Um, so we did learn a lot from it. Uh, but uh, you know, it was it was not a uh, a product that we made a lot of money on. Probably didn't make any money. But uh, like I said, it uh, we we learned a lot from it, and it, I think it sold wind riders. Thanks for listening. To find out more about the multi hull conversations with Jim Brown series, come visit us on the web at www.outrigmedia.com.